I've been waiting for the new Planet of the Apes movie since it was first announced, and I've been wondering, what would it really look like if apes took over the world? Would we be there to see it? Which apes would become intelligent, and what kind of society would they form? Surprisingly, there's a lot we already know about what it most likely will look like. What's more surprising is, it's already begun. First, we have to imagine where an uprising of ape intelligence is most likely to occur. On a map of where most populations of great apes live, we'll find statistically it's not so likely to begin in San Francisco. Most apes are concentrated in Africa. However, all of their species are endangered or critical due to human poaching and deforestation. Based on evidence from some of the longest primate studies in history, there's one area in the world where primates are more likely to rise up, Japan. But not as we know it today. Within irradiated forests and bubbling hot springs resides the humble and unsuspecting snow monkey, the Japanese macaque. While technically old world monkeys, they are the largest primate population with increasingly sophisticated behaviors, social structures, and inventions. Snow monkeys are better suited to the cold than any other primate and famously use hot springs as heat sources for large troops. This unique environment is a catalyst for complex matriarchal structures of hegemony, where children of popular socialites inherit their parents' authority. Their adaptability and omnivorous diet make them the most likely primate to survive into the future. For example, in the 1960s, almost 200 snow monkeys were sent to Texas after they caused havoc on humans in Japan. Instead of surviving the snow and eating flowers and fungus, they faced desert heat, spined cacti, and dangerous coyotes, bobcats, and rattlesnakes. Yet they thrived in this harsh and alien environment, becoming larger, healthier, stronger, and more fertile, and even invented distinct calls for rattlesnake sightings. These desert monkeys created new stratifications around shadows and shade from the sun instead of hot springs, kicking lesser females out to the heat. But the strongest reason for a planet of snow monkeys is their inventions and cultures. They learned to wash and season their food in salt water, even sifting their grains, then taught it to the next generation. They've been found riding deer in exchange for food and grooming. They collect and play with rocks. They have regional accents. They play with snowballs and some have even even been spotted fishing. For all these reasons, Caesar may not look like this, but instead like this. With a circulatory system built for the snow, their blood will better pump oxygen, especially to the brain. They will also get bigger to survive even colder temperatures, which correlates with bigger brain sizes. They'll lose their tails as they get larger and adapt to living on the ground. A future ice age will lower sea levels, creating a new world. Future macaques will continue living near hot springs, especially as global temperatures quickly fall. If the Sea of Japan is cut off from the ocean, it will lead to evaporation and salt formation. Not only do snow monkeys already season their food, but available salt pillars could be used on their ample food source, a unique creature native to Toyoma Bay, the firefly squid, a type of glowing cephalopod. Already known for fishing and creating artificial pools, future macaques may breed the attention-grabbing squid in hatcheries. Today, Today, Japanese residents returning to Fukushima after the nuclear accident in 2012 have been fighting off encroaching macaques who have been used to unguarded gardens. The snow monkey's favorite snack has mutated from Fukushima radiation into strange twirling shapes with huge stem structures. If macaques continue spreading the seeds of mutant dandelions, it may grow into a new species following the same paths as corn, palm trees, or the fire tree, becoming a large crop for future apes. What about the iconic settlements created in Red wood forest. Would real-life apes in the future build something similar? Other than natural roads and pragmatic stairs around fisheries and spas, there's no implication of any specific architecture other than rock hordes piling up. However, salt and heavy sediments of hot springs may build up over time in favorite seats, hubs of gossip, and corners delegated to specific families. Over time, this may look like pale terraces built over decades, or colorful, halophilic, bacteria-studded columns. One group of snow monkeys have learned to dig washing bowls with seawater for each individual family. This behavior has been taught and passed down, which may continue into a central cornerstone for family groups. Evaporating salt water along the Sea of Japan and the hot springs will deposit more limestone in the surrounding mountains the monkeys call home. Animals with extra limestone in their diets, like cows and chickens, have gained thicker bones, grown bigger, produce more milk, and 
and get stronger teeth. During the mating season, male macaques fight over mates through shouting matches. As they become more solitary, they may need to become louder, growing facial phalanges like orangutans. They also settle scores by biting each other, which may lead to an arms race for having strong bite force, meaning sagittal crests similar to orangutans and gorillas. When male macaques reach adulthood, they leave the family hot spring to create their own troops. Individual squid farms and salt patties will start to rise up along the land bridge once called Japan as they spread further south. Complex macaque society is built on popularity and bloodlines. The more friends you have, the more powerful you are. Leading each group is a male and female with the most children and respect. Primatologists call the leading matron a primogenitrix, a socialite in charge of keeping the peace in the bathhouses and spas of her domain. In the real planet of the apes, the rulers might actually be lifeguards. Snow monkeys have also been shown to mourn their dead, with mothers carrying their stillborn babies a month after birth, acting as if it was still alive. Macaques have been seen doing this for complete strangers and completely different species like squirrels. Their history of living in trees and carrying their dead until they mummify may lead to burials within trees, or perhaps preserving the dead under calcite and salt. The macaques that cared for a dead squirrel were black crested macaques. This strange empathy comes from having a surplus of food during monsoon season that everyone can enjoy. Kindness and empathy is given to all troop members despite rank, but the ice age winds make the land bridge an arid place, meaning their society will be harsh and unforgiving. Chimpanzees create single file lines and walk quietly like soldiers around their turfs, hunting for other ape colonies. If future macaques become more territorial and protective, they may do the same along rock walls to protect the hot spring. Primogenitrix couples will sit at the center of their hot spring kingdoms. Females will stay in the same groups their entire lives with their children inheriting their positions of power. Primatologists have described macaque hierarchies as despotic and tyrannical, and will most likely become worse as they become more territorial and sophisticated. Already we're seeing a lot of differences from the movies. In those films, Caesar's window becomes a symbol for home and Caesar himself. Could future primates have something similar? Surprisingly, this is exactly what one study in Tokyo proved to be true. Japanese macaques learned to identify symbols with actual objects. They could reconstruct those symbols themselves and could combine two elements to recreate one of the learned symbols. But what symbols might the real Planet of the Apes assign meaning to? Scientists have found that Japanese macaques have an immediate danger response to seeing snakes and symbols of snakes. Using their collections of rocks in a Pollock-esque style, they could warn of dangers like residual radiation in Fukushima by painting serpentine symbols. In Japanese macaques, infants and elderly more often had blue eyes while juveniles and adults had yellow eyes. Perhaps the importance of taking care of the young and respecting elderly will persist in the symbolic color of blue, while the responsibility of aiding the troop and caring for young will be symbolized by yellow. In the females of the matriarchal packs, redder and darker skin has been proven to signal social dominance and importance, specifically in the bloated or swelling of their rears. Perhaps red will signify importance just as it does in human psychology, while symbols of their social displays may start to show up in their culture as they try to artificially simulate rank. Regrettably, this means masks and flags could look like their butts. These masks might actually evolve out of a similar behavior to orangutans who use grass and leaves to make their calls even louder, essentially wearing facial megaphones. In the center of Japan, you have a tightly knit cluster of hot springs connected by trade. In the center, the family with the most connections reigns supreme. However, to the south, another nexus of hot springs is apparent and could spell trouble between the two most sociable saunas. The southern nexus of baths is well fortified, surrounded by other hot springs ready to defend them. This independent kingdom is also the closest to the successful squid farms of the Sea of Japan. The lowest social groups of the future ape world will be introverted kingdoms isolated geographically from the rest. Socially cut off from the other groups, they may form their own culture independent of their southern brothers. With so many earthquakes and pyroclastic lightning going on around volcanic regions, they may form religions based on natural disasters. As we've already seen, natural environments affect the cultures of already existing macaques. When Koba takes over Caesar's kingdom, he enlists the help of Caesar's son, Blue 
Uwaz. And we do see this kind of political adoptions of suns in macaques. If the snow monkeys of the successful southern nexus move further south to warmer latitude, they would find an open steppe and grassland, adapting a social structure similar to gelada baboon. One strange political technique found in geladas is using infants as living shields. Barbary macaques do this too. To stay united and protect the troop, Atlas Mountain snow macaques share a baby between them as they argue, passing the infant as a foothold until they calm down. If this behavior continues and becomes more sophisticated, a strange new regiment of child soldiers will become symbolic knights used between kingdoms to keep the peace. Fathers may raise children and even adopt juveniles in order to find which one of them is the strongest and bravest. With too many young males in line to become alpha, a subgroup of child guards will be trained for peace talks and political rivalry. Even stranger will be the Game of Thrones-esque battle to kidnap children. This is already seen in macaques. Hostages will be taken by higher-ups in order to catapult their friend group and social kingdom higher. Will the kind-hearted southern nexus with their ample food surplus be too naive against the northern primogenitrix? If they are cast out and forced to find a new kingdom, a new land formation only now rising out of the waters may make a perfect stronghold to hide from their violent northern relatives. Jutting out of the sea is a monument carved by time, almost as if it was made just for them. The Yonag Gami monument structure will be a strong respite and retreat for those monkeys wishing to escape the totalitarian regimes of their home in the land bridge. Thanks to all my patrons, I love you guys, and if you want to check my Patreon, my Instagram, or my TikTok, they're all in the links in my profile. Thank you guys so much for liking the video and following my page for so long. I love doing these intelligent animals of the future, and tell me in the comments how you think this compares to the movie that just came out for Planet of the Apes. I'm buying my tickets now, and I'm gonna go see it tonight. So let me guys know what you guys thought of the video, and I hope to do more of these. Bye!